Good morning everyone. This is Dr. Rani Thakre from Department of Zoology. Today we are going to study the subject zoology in which we are going to study in a topic classification of animal. Now what exactly the zoology is? Zoology is a branch of biology concerned with the classification and vital phenomenon of animal. In other words we can say that a branch of biology which deals with the study of animals. Now what do you mean by animal classification? Animal classification is an important system to know how all living organisms are related. That means one organism how is going to relate with the other. This system of animal classification was developed by the Swedish botanist Carolus Linnaeus. He put forward a system and to that system it is known as linear taxonomy or linear hierarchy. Based on linear method, organisms are arranged as follows like first kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. So, highest level of classification is kingdom while the lowest level of classification is the species. Now, mainly animals are classified into two groups, invertebrates which is also known as the non-cordates and vertebrates which is also known as the cordates animal. Now, the base, which are the three basic fundamental characteristics on which these animals are classified into two groups vertebrates and invertebrates that are presence of notochord, presence of nerve cord and presence of pharyngeal gill slits. On these basic three basic fundamental characteristics the animals are placed into two groups cordates and non cordates Now group invertebrates. The group invertebrates include mainly two types of organisms. First one is the unicellular one, another one is the multicellular one. When we can say that the animal is unicellular, an organism that consists of a single cell. Such kind of organisms are known as the unicellular organism. When we can say that the an animal is the multicellular one, when organism possess more than one cell, then it is usually known as the multicellular organism. Now, unicellular invertebrate animal includes phylum protozoa. Protos is, protozoa is a word which is derived from the Greek language where protos means the first and zone means the animal. In that we are going to study about the different animals like amoeba, euglena and paramecium. Phylum protozoa is mainly classified on the basis of their locomotory organelles. So, on the basis of their locomotory organelles, these phylum protozoa divided into four different classes, class sarcodina, class mastigophora, class ciliata and class porozoa. When we can, when we are going to put our animal into the class sarcodina, when they are having the locomotory organs as pseudopodia. Mastigophorans have the locomotory organs as flagella, ciliata have the locomotory organs as cilia, while the sporozoans are not having any kind of a locomotory uh, organs hence the locomotory organs are absent in case of the animals from the class sporozoa. Now multicellular invertebrates animals are placed under eight different phylums phylum porifera, cilenterata, platyhelminthes, ascalminthes, annelida, orthropoda, mollusca and echinodermata. Polyferans, which animals are known as the poriferans. The porifera is a Latin word which is derived from the Latin language where porous means the pore and fairy means to bear. That means pore bearing animals are placed under this phylum. Now representative that means the members of the phylum porifera are also known as the sponges. This phylum includes about 5000 different species amongst which smallest sea sponge is about 2 to 3 centimeter long while the largest sea sponge is about 95 to 95 centimeter. Then classification of porifera. Porifera are grouped into three different classes depending upon their endoskeleton. Endoskeleton means how their internal body skeleton is made up of. On that basis, these animals are placed into the three different classes. When the animal's body is made up of calcareous spicule, then it is placed under the class calcarea. When their body is made up of siliceous spicule, then it is placed under the class hectocnelia while when they are, their body is made up of siliceous spicules along with the spongin fibers then these animals are placed under the class desmospongia. Now poriferas three different classes calcarea in which we are going to study an example of leucosolenia class 2 desmospongia in which we are going to study an example of spongilla while class 3 hexactinelida in which we are going to study an example of euphlectella. 
then cylinterets phylum cylinterata cylinterets are nothing but these are the cylindrical globular and spherical animals these are mainly the colonial animals hence the member of this colony single member of this colony is known as the zooid and these cylinterets are mainly marked by and noted for the polymorphism poly means many and morph means form that means these members are having the different different forms then on the basis this on the basis of their external skeleton these are depending upon divided into three different classes class 1 is the hydrozoa in which we are going to study an example of hydro uh, hydra which is commonly known as sea fur in class 2 cyphozoa we are going to study an example of aurelia which is commonly known as jellyfish and class 3 that is anthozoa in which we are going to study an example of mindrena which is commonly known as brain coral that means corals are placed under this class that is class anthozoa next that is the phylum platyhelminthes the term platyhelminth is again derived from the greek word where platy p l a t plat is equal to f l a t flat the and helminthes means the word that means hence the organisms of this phylum are also known as the flatworms and this phylum includes about 13000 different species now classification of a, a animals from the phylum platyhelminthes uh, depending upon their nature either they are free living or they are parasitic one so they are classified into three different classes class turbellia in which free living flatworms are placed class 2 that is trematoda in which flux all parasite flux are placed class 3 that is cystoda that is tapeworm in which all the parasite tapeworms are placed then again phylum platyhelminthes class 1 turbellaria class 2 tr trematoda class 3 cystoda then we will move towards next phylum that is phylum ascelminthes which is also known as the nematoda organisms of this phylum is known as the roundworm why when because they appear circular in their cross section so these animals are commonly known as the roundworms many roundworms live as the parasite in plants as well as in animals and mainly they cause serious agriculture veterinary as well as human health problems then classification of ascelminthes ascelme the members of the phylum ascelminthes are mainly classified into the two classes class 1 that is a phasmida phasmid means caudal sensory organs the platyhelminthes animals which are having the caudal helminthes uh, caudal sensory organs that are placed in the class 1 that is a phasmida and and when these organs are absent that place under the class of phasmida while when the plasmids are present these are placed under the class 2 that is the phasmida again phylum nematoda class 1 of phasmida class 2 phasmida here we are going to study an example of trichinella while in class 2 we are going to study an example of ascaris phylum annelida these are also known as the ring worm or segmented worm why because their body is made up of a segments and in this phylum about 8700 different species are placed phylum annelida is divided into three main classes on the basis of presence and absence of their parapodia setae and metamorphs metamorphs are nothing but the body segments now again class uh, classification of a annelida class 1 that is the polychaeta poly means many and setae means hairs the animals which shows the presence of many hairs on hair like projections on their body are placed under the class 1 that is polychaeta here we are going to study an example of neris class 2 that is oligochaeta oligo is few oligo is equal to few and seta means hair like projection again <coughs> the animals we show few number of hair, hair like projections are placed under the class 2 that is the oligochaeta here we are going to study an example of ferretima prostuma which is also known as the earthworm and class 3 that is the hirudinia here we are going to study an example of leech phylum arthropoda now this is the largest phylum from all the animal kingdom invertebrate group c group uh, this what arthropoda is derived from the greek language where arthros is equal to jointed and podas means the appendages or legs those animal are having the jointed legs are placed under the phylum arthropoda this is the 
first group to develop a true head that means these are the animals which for the first time shows the presence of true head along with the sense organs and feeding organs this is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom which includes lobsters crabs spiders mites insects centipedes and millipedes about 80% of all known species of animals are placed under this phylum now these animals our basis classified on the basis of modification in their structure specialization number and appearance of body segments and number and appearance of their appendages so these animals are placed into the four sub phylums sub phylum 1 chelicerata sub phylum 2 crustacea sub phylum 3 myriapoda and sub phylum 4 hexapoda here we are going to study about the scorpion limulus crab then millipede centipede and moth now this is all about the phylum arthropoda about the phylum mollusca we will continue in our next lecture